to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. The ability of God. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for you to do. Look up, please. The Bible is saying here, Prophet Jeremiah is saying that this heaven and earth where all our problems and solutions, every solution we're looking for, we hope to bring it here within this domain that both the heaven and the earth was created by his great power. And on the strength of that, there is nothing too hard for him to do. Everybody say ability. Now listen, there are people who have integrity in our world, but they do not have ability. I promise you, that if only I get to this office and I see that things are all right, I will give you a job. The person has integrity, but he may find himself in a situation where he does not have the financial, the political, the sociological wherewithal to manifest his commitment. It takes more than integrity to perform. You must have ability. I want to pay your school fees. I really want to. But I do not have the money. God does not have integrity alone. God has ability. Now, this is good news. If the only thing God had was integrity, we'll, we'll still be in trouble. Because he will be apologizing till today. I'm sorry I promised your grandfather that I was going to lift you. I assure you I am still God. Just give me time. When I'm done with the devil, when the mountains, when creation finally sub submits to me, I assure you that you will not cry. That's as far as integrity can go. But my God has ability. Ability is the ability or might is the ability to make what you say happen. I can desire that the light in this great auditorium be off and promise you that in five minutes it will be off I may be well intentioned that's integrity but do I have the ability it takes the 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 the, the, the physical strength to ward off all the resistances and go to the switch and put it off please hear me it is because God has both integrity and ability that we can stand and speak over people's lives. It is because God has integrity and ability that you can sow a seed and actually believe that a harvest will come. His ability shows in agriculture. There is no year provided rain and the conditions are there. When you plant, his ability is still at work in the earth. After more than thousands of years, the earth still obeys him. The God of ability. So when God says, I will lift you, don't look at his integrity alone. Look at his ability. Before God speaks, he checks whether he has the power to make it happen. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 and 4 we'll find somewhere to pray Second Peter chapter 1 
we we'll start from verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied unto you through knowledge the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord verse 3 says according as his the real giver in this kingdom is his divine power not just his intention he wills it but it takes power to give his divine power hath given us all things how many things please help me how many things all things that pertain unto life and godliness let me give you an example of the things that pertain unto life school fees house all of the needs that we have those are things that pertain to life the bible says his divine power can give it the things that pertain unto godliness, the richness of your fellowship, your spiritual growth, your sense of fulfillment, your work with God, whether it is a matter of life or godliness, his divine power sustains the ability to cover all areas. I want you to read scripture carefully and see how God mysteriously turned people around and turn lives around Moses why are you crying unto me I am not just a God of integrity integrity was when I spoke to you at the bush now you see ability stretch forth your rod on that Red Sea it does not just end with integrity I need you to see my ability and they sang the songs of Miriam I will sing unto the Lord she said for he hath triumphed gloriously even the horses together with his rider only one who has power can turn a horse and the rider into a sea. Let me show you his ability in scripture. How about the rod that bordered with no roots? Let me show you his ability. A man who when three Hebrew boys were cast into fire, the Bible says they saw the fourth man looking like the son of God. And it says these were men who the fire had no power over. I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea I sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea if you know where Egypt is, you will respect God. There is a reason why Pharaoh respected God. Egypt was a place of wizardry. Do you know there are two people in the Bible who ran away from their assignments? Or at least asked questions. It was difficult for them. One was Moses. When God said, I'm sending you to Pharaoh, he said, you are joking. Don't you, don't try me. I was to be the next Pharaoh. I knew what I was studying before I ran away. I won't go back to that place of wizardry with a rod in my hand. You want me to die? I saw these people manipulate the realms of the spirit. They were the then superpower. You would not come to it. Pharaoh was not just a king. Pharaoh was an embodiment of spirits. So Moses holds a rod. And they look at his familiar face as he steps into Egypt. And he stands before Ramesses, his half-brother. And says, brother, good to see you. It's just that this time around, I'm not an Egyptian. I've met one guy called the God of the Hebrews. And I have come with a rod as a token from his presence to you. Thus saith the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. I could imagine Moses clapping his hand and saying, wonders will never end. The wilderness has 40 years of being at the backside of the mountain has done something to this man. After his hard-heartedness, ah, the mighty one shook himself and said, This night, there is an angel that will pass over Egypt and that all the firstborns of the Egyptians, do you know the covenant that the firstborns of Egyptians had? They had something called the covenant of life. They didn't die anyhow. You go and study history. You will know why God looked for the firstborns. Because the firstborn of an Egyptian was not an ordinary child. 
Are we together now? They were dedicated to deities and they tied their lives to either trees or animals or other objects. They didn't just die like that. One firstborn could be, a, it would be easier for all other children to die than one firstborn to die. And God said, I want to show you something. Since all your might is concentrated on your firstborns, in one night, I will pass. Hela sali kaparusiata. Oh, that is the God you are still asking, will rent really come? That's the same God you are asking, will you really lift my child? That's the same God you are asking. When the firstborns were dead, the Bible says, Pharaoh did not just release them to go. He didn't even allow their dough rise. He gave them gold and he said, go. When they left, he sat down in empty Egypt and said, what have I done? He said, pursue them. What a hard man. Haven't seen this kind of thing. You should mind your business and say, Lord, let me just be repenting while these people carry their trouble and go. Give me other slaves that will help me build Egypt. He said, no way, I'm going back. That's to tell you how stubborn Satan is. You need power, oh. Just because he left you yesterday does not mean he will leave you forever. He left Jesus for a moment, your Bible says. The next time he would come back, he didn't come to him directly. He came through Peter and then through Judas. Say unto God, Psalm 66 verse 3, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. Hallelujah. The Bible says one time the city of Jericho was shut within and without. It said none came in and none came out. Let me speak to someone. I don't know what belongs to you that has been shut and nothing. What sort of a place is that? Listen, everything God created gives and receives. What kind of a place is shut? Nothing goes out. Nothing comes in. I stand by the God of heaven and I speak over someone in the name that is above all names everything shutting your blessings your lifting your lifting your rising i scatter that wall right now none came in none went out let me tell you this jericho was an altar because they didn't carry anything there they were not really interested in, in possessing the land they crumbled it, picked a few things, picked Rahab and left. His power. Ah, Lord God. It takes power to get your property. There are still wicked men on earth. It doesn't just take power to get. It takes power to keep. But I know whom I have believed, the Bible says, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed unto him against that day. Please listen to what I'm saying because we are going to pray here. I'm praying that the spirit of faith will rest on someone. That you will get up and shake away all the things you've been given excuses for. some of you God spoke to you since 2015 and said it's time to start your house project <laughs> you know the way this thing is you have to wisdom is profitable to direct we have to look at it let me tell you this there is no time that will be convenient for anything it's faith that creates the time and makes it convenient please hear what I'm telling you men of faith don't check the weather for anything even if, the, even if the storm and the boat is coming, they don't stop moving. They just verify whether Jesus is still in the boat. If he's there, the journey is still safe. I, I don't, I'm not teaching that we should be careless. But let me tell you, we live in a time with people who are full of fear. 
is why people don't rise they don't prosper they don't build anything i will do i will do for decades and they do not move there are people who have been in this city probably i'm challenging you respectfully speaking there are many young people here you are of age you are still in your parents house you will not move out why you have been careful you know there's no job the way no one day you trust God for grace, find one one room with your recharge card, move out there and lie down in the mat and say, Father, this is my Bible, this is you. The signs follow, they don't go before you. If you don't move, you will never see anything. We live in a risk averse world full of an obsession for guarantees. This is the victory. The Spirit of God is speaking to someone. There are steps you should take in this season. Marking time and giving flimsy excuses will not produce the results. Hallelujah. The ability of God. The ability of God. The ability of God. That you believe God is able. Please find a way of believing. What is school fees? I'm not a stupid person talking to you, believe me. I understand from a human standpoint, things can be challenging. Things can push your faith. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on Tell you a little story years ago I was going to go and preach somewhere I prayed fasted and it was time to go and preach and rain was falling and I knew that I didn't want to disappoint those people the only way was to just make up my mind and go through that rain I said Lord you have shown me in visions that I will be speaking to kings and nations and nobles it does not look like it now but you have the power what is a car I love you more than all these things and I prayed in the spirit and I opened the door I went out through the rain while the rain was falling on me I was declaring with joy as I left in the name of Jesus one day nations will celebrate his grace even while today you are now clapping but it took faith it took faith God is inspiring someone it took faith God is saying, I'm calling you into ministry and all you are doing is printing cards and giving people and saying, you invite me and see, you will never do ministry that way. It, life will be hard if you follow it that way and you will suffer and be angry at those succeeding. Take a step of faith. Two hours, three hours every day. Lock yourself in a room. You are building capacity. It is faith. You are taking an action based on what God has said. The ability of God. I'm, I'm, listen, I want to do something to your mind now before we pray. You have to trust God. God is able. The Bible says, now unto him, Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him, who is the him? God, who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask or think far above all that we ask or think if God says I will lift you this city has enough blessings for your lifting if God says I will prosper you if he says I will anoint you believe him if I stop here and we pray that's fine but listen to me if all you do is just hope one day go better is a very sociologically comforting statement but is demonic and destructive Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 this book of the law it says shall not depart from out of thy mouth it says thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do not, not just to say to do not form all that I command you this day then and only then shall you make your way prosperous and you shall have good success.
God has integrity, but he also has ability. Behold, I give you authority over snakes, scorpions. Do you not know that there are all kinds of demonic arsenals scheduled to see that your life never rises to the place of prophecy? Please don't downplay what I just said. The average African family is not aware of the onslaughts of darkness orchestrated by hell to see that you never become what God has destined. It takes power to subdue darkness. It takes power to do what your grandfather tried doing and died in the process. What your own father tried to do and did not do. Now you come up in the name of the Lord. I'm a faithful member of Victory Life Bible Church and in the name of Jesus I'm rising. It takes power. Power. Ah, Lord God, thou has made the heavens and the earth and that by thy great power. I have, I have indoctrinated myself. I have brought myself to a point where I have been, I, I don't know what to call it. I've done, the Holy Ghost has done something to me. The reality of the power of God is a reality that will never fade out of my mind again. There is nothing I cannot believe God for. Believe me when I say this. The only resistance in my life is the voice of God and process. That's it. That's the only thing that has the power to limit me in life. The voice of God and process. Many things that you have allowed to subdue you. It's time in this conference to get angry and say, Lord, I apologize, I have limited you. There are families here that have to hold their hands and say, Lord, we repent. I don't know what suddenly happened to us that in one day, God gave men cities. In one day, God... Look, the Bible says that David stood before Goliath. Goliath said, am I a dog? I will kill you, but respect me. I'm a warrior. Israel, is this your best? David said, you don't know who is talking to you. You come to me with your bows as big as you are. You are still holding bow and arrow. I come to you with a sling. And in the name of the Lord. Listen, I'm imparting faith. Because this night, the things you have been afraid of, you are going to bring them again and say, who are you that mountain? Who are you that building project? I've been giving excuses every year. This is the year I must complete it. This is not some carnal thing. Please listen to me. We are spiritual people. Listen, you know, if you are given to mediocrity, this message will not bless you very much because mediocrity thrives on the absence of messages like this to keep giving excuses. A message like this will shake you to the core and leave you with a decision either to stand up and take bold steps or retreat and sit back there. There is nobody who has a guarantee for anything in this life. Men take bold, radical, and sometimes risky steps of faith. Apostle, I want to start a business, but I'm afraid. Who knows what will happen? Of course, something is going to happen. What if people don't come and patronize me? And so we don't move forward. We don't make progress. Apostle, this ministry, God is putting in my heart to organize a crusade or to organize a conference, but I'm afraid. I don't want to embarrass myself. Let me tell you something. If you take the shame, you have been taking the glory too. Whoever takes the glory must also take the shame. He can't be taking the glory and leave the shame for me. Uh -uh. We are one. We are together. If you take the glory in my life see this is how to put pressure on God's integrity you stand before a sick body let me tell you this if you will ever raise the dead your first assignment is to stand before one 
you are never going to truly raise the dead by proxy. One day, you will have to summon the courage to look at someone with all these things in the nose and say, today. You know how many mortuaries have been locked in? Me. To pray for the dead. When you hear some of the things God is doing, it did not start today. Sir, they've taken me inside mortuary and they closed me so that the people, the administration, the administrators will not quarrel the people. And they left me there. I said, which dead body am I praying for now? Because there are so many dead bodies there. I came and stood before the dead body. I laid my hands. It was like stone. I didn't know what parts to lay my hands on. Let me tell you one of the ways that God builds faith. He brings you face to face with what you fear. Listen to what I'm telling you. You may not like this message, but keep it. You will need it one day. It is not every prayer to drive it away that makes it go. There are times that he keeps you face to face with your fear. You will so fear to the point that you will suddenly realize that it didn't have the kind of power you thought it had. Listen, the first day I stood before someone on a wheelchair, he was not in a crusade ground, he was in a house full of responsible people. They gave me drink, they took care of me, they greeted me with the kind of honor that you will even be angry because you know that if that miracle does not happen, you must justify the honor you received. I stood there all of the scriptures that I know ah, would the ground open and let me enter I prayed for that person prayed for that person he was not even feeling anything in the leg you know there's how they can say okay I'm feeling life absolutely nothing was happening after 10 15 minutes I said that's all right no problem but you would think I left the way I came no the more you die to yourself, to your fears, the more the spirit of faith can really work in you. Back to that mortuary story. After I prayed and prayed and prayed, nothing happened. And you know they had closed the door. I prayed. I just used the opportunity to really meditate and say, look how brief this life is. These are all dead bodies that were alive. Because nothing was happening. So today when you hear stories, whether it is of raising the dead or raising people from wheelchairs, it did not happen overnight. Let me tell you the truth. No matter how much a man of faith you are, you will still go through the school of faith. It will be full of a lot of disappointments. But fail as you make progress. Move as you make progress. One day you will gain such power and dexterity. Remember the apostles and their embarrassment. Jesus went up the Mount of Transfiguration. They decided to, to use the opportunity quickly to show that they were his disciples. They came on an epileptic patient. He could not be healed. You, you know the disappointment? They met Jesus and said, no, no, come on. You couldn't have done this for us. But the time came when the shadow of Peter. There is mastery in the spirit. Listen, the one who laughs and does not do anything is the one who will remain in shame forever. The one who cries while moving is the one who soon honor and glory will rest upon his head. Please hear what I'm telling you. Know the difference between failure as an event and failure as a person. God called you to be a prophet. You call someone thinking he was a man. Let's say I'm, I'm a lady. Ah, that's number one. You are already out of it. That level of prophetic error requires you to go for a retreat. Oh, I'm seeing five people in your family. I'm the only child of my father. And you are standing there feeling stupid. Yet, genuinely, the call of a prophet is on you. Don't worry about the error. You made the mistake. Be proud of it. See, your scar that is a symbol of shame will become your symbol of honor tomorrow. 
when you get to heaven you don't need to ask who among you is Jesus just find who has the scar that is Jesus the 24 elders do not have it just find the person who has a scar by his side what you are ashamed of today will become the basis of your honor tomorrow when it has to do with faith pragmatically speaking let me be honest with you in the name of honesty you may not get results overnight in one day there is something about the development of the human spirit and its response to the word of god you just keep moving as far as god spoke it you will make mistakes don't worry the school of faith is powerful it will give you everything you lost while learning hallelujah are you blessed i'll find somewhere to stop here so that we can pray god's ability in the morning please don't miss the morning session i will share with you the dynamics of bible faith tonight i just showed you the two attributes of god that your faith must be predicated upon his integrity his ability his integrity i've met people who have ability but they do not have integrity there are others who have integrity and do not have ability this god who has called us this God who has anointed us, let me encourage a man of God here who is probably here and saying, Apostle, you don't know what is happening around my ministry. No growth, no increase, no destiny help us, no favor. There is a God in heaven. God is not a traditional ruler. God is not a political aspirant. He's the monarch of the universe. When God decides to invest his jealousy upon your life, woe betides any man who stands his way. He has that ability. This is the victory that overcomes. This is the victory that will build. This is the victory that will bring sinners to Jesus Christ. You make up your mind that you are bringing 1,000 souls or 2,000 souls or whatever amount of souls. And it looks like, how will you reach them? No. You just believe God for it. And you watch the wonder-working power of Jesus. Can we pray tonight? Please rise up on your feet. two prayer points and we're done I'd like you to passionately cry cry unto the God of the heavens cry unto the God of the Bible and say Father help my own belief help my own belief something about my not recognizing you are a God of integrity something about my not recognizing you are all powerful is limiting me in life and my life is unable to speak the praises of Jesus but tonight I have heard your word lift your voice and pray please pray please pray you call the conference the verdict blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance help my own belief hallelujah listen please please look at me the bible says for our light affliction which is but for a moment it says he walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory it says whilst we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen why for the things that are seen are temporal temporal means subject to change but the things that are unseen are eternal 
I'd like you to pray right now and declare any condition in your life you know that it does not look like the verdict God has brought over your life from scripture. Open your mouth in one minute and declare, I will not be discouraged. I speak to this mountain in the name of Jesus Christ. What I see is temporal. This health situation, you are temporal. Please pray, don't be silent. This financial situation, you are temporal. This marital situation, you are temporal. This ministry situation, you are temporal. this situation with my spiritual life my prayer life you are temporal my word study life oh you must change you must change you must change by the power of faith hallelujah hallelujah Please just lend me two, three minutes and we're done for tonight. Listen to me. If it is Bible faith, it works. Are we together? Do we have ushers here? There are people who are going to start running out by the power of God. There is a grace that is coming on people. Literally, physically, like an anointing is coming on them. Will not take time. Please help them and bring them out. Just a few minutes. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens, please bring them out, and the earth by thy great power. If he made the heavens and the earth, he can make any life. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. A strong anointing, a strong anointing is coming upon them. I know that we'll pray for the sick and the rest tomorrow, but let me just respond as the Holy Ghost is moving me. Hallelujah. There are families here. Listen to me. There are families that have been under siege for a long time. Nobody rises beyond the level. Right now, fire is coming on those people. Bring them out right now. Father, help them please. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. In the name of Jesus, whether you are an usher or not, please help them. Anyone under the anointing close to you, just bring them out. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Just give me five minutes and we're done. We have to give God an opportunity to move by his outstretched arm. Is someone praying? Open your mouth in one minute. Everything that must leave your life in this conference, declare by the Spirit. Please bring them out. Declare by the Spirit. shadow you will light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you will kick down lie you will tear down coming after me there's no shadow you will light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me In the name of Jesus, every family here, I speak as touching the might and the ability of the creator of the ends of the earth. 
that every power hold her please don't let her run around she will fall i declare by the spirit of god every power that will not let you go this night by the god of heaven i declare it broken right now broken right now broken right now broken right now we're almost done this is what happens in the house of God it's time for people's destinies to move forward hear me whatever has tied your feet so that you will not make progress in the name of Jesus, we set it on fire. 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 Hallelujah. Who is Balogun? Balogun. I'm hearing the name Balogun. Is there someone with that name? Balogun, you are wearing suit. Balogun, is there someone like that? You are wearing suit, no tie. Balogun, who is that? What's your name? I know that time. Please, can you lend me two more minutes, sir? Where are you from? Um, what's your name, sir? Your name is Balogun. Yes. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing where Bishop Oyede Ghost Church is. Where are you correct, from? Correct, correct. That's where I, I am. Correct. That's my father's house. My father's house is opposite Kenalan. What, what is the name? Where, where, where is the office? Opposite Kenalan. Go that, Kenalan. That's what I'm saying. Kenalan. Do I know you? Have I ever seen you? Yes, I'm yes. telling you that I'm looking at you and I'm seeing. Correct, correct. That's where you are. Yes. My brother, your life is about to change in a way that you will marvel and wonder. There is a God that sits in heaven. Please, whatever you would do, please hear me. Do your best to not miss tomorrow morning session. Even if it means you carry your loved ones, if there's no space, sit anywhere. But please make sure you come with your heart open. When God comes, please help that lady so you don't injure her. We're almost done. Are we together now? I'm seeing light just went this direction. There's so, hold on. There's someone who will shout here now. Loud under the anointing. Bring the person out. Just here. Help them, please. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming after you. Hallelujah. So, sir, I want to pray for you. What do you do? I'm, okay. I, I didn't even hear you. Let, I'm saying that, are you a pastor? Yes. You are a pastor, yes. but you also do business. Yes. What do you do? I do business into computers. Okay. Stuff. I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. Your life is about to change. You will Amen. not forget this conference. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I stretch my hands and I declare. That man lifting your hand, this gentleman, you, stand up. Come and stand here. Your life is about to change. Lift your hands. Take that fire right now. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never, never be the same. There is an anointing that has come upon you. You will pray. You will fast. You will move in dimensions of the spirit. This gentleman, I don't know you all, but a great fire just came upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. I'm hearing the name Jennifer. We have to respect time, but please, my apologies. Jennifer. Is there anyone called Jennifer? Jennifer. Let me just pray for you, sir. In Jesus' name here at this conference, I stand in faith with Apostle Achidume and his wife and we decree and declare over you let things turn around right now in a way that will surprise you 
in Jesus name what's your name my dear from where from State of origin, no? yes Delta. Delta can I pray for you in the name of Jesus the plague of witchcraft ah I'm stretching my hands on you and I'm seeing the light touching that other lady the one at your back isn't it a mystery I'm stretching my hands but what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit is touching that lady my dear look at me fire is coming upon your life for you and your family the month of May is a strange month of lifting for your family this is what I'm seeing by the spirit I declare it so let it be and for you my dear I break the hand of witchcraft and every orchestration the Bible declares blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance it says that spoke against us that he nailed it to his cross we we enforce this verdict that the cross speaks over your life and your family and I use this as a point of contact to pray everything that should have entered your hand and for whatever reason has been delayed by the works of darkness I stand tonight in the name of Jesus some of you between now and tomorrow morning you will return with very strange testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ please um, you are here and I'm seeing at least there's one three years there's one um, I'm seeing the number five that would be five years you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb I would have just closed this but the Lord just ministered this to me is who is that person our time is gone we have to respect time if you are the one I'm talking about would you just boldly indicate so that I pray for you quickly you're married you're trusting God for the fruit of the womb and this has happened to you how many years my dear five years in June five years in June is your husband here yes. husband can I pray for you is that all right please don't be embarrassed this is a spiritual family let me pray for you come because that's the same way you come and stand here with your children too you see listen when God does these things it's more than just showing that a man is anointed this is a revelation of his love it's a revelation of his power so beyond the man our attention must be on Jesus to discern what he is doing are we together now you're trusting God listen truly speaking God is all powerful I know respectfully speaking you've consulted physicians I know that prayers have been offered on you and I do not demean and downplay anything that has happened to you but I want you to believe this once for there is a name that is above every other name the power of God will come on one of you when that happens I'll pray for you this is the instruction God is telling me one of you standing here the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come on you name of Jesus everything that is stopping your fruitfulness I don't care the medical situation in the name that is above all names in the name of Jesus I come with the rod of a higher priesthood I declare womb open now in the name of Jesus Christ for all of you trusting God the children God will give you will be more than just bodies. God will give you nations. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have believed it and we declare it. I stand in faith again with the man of God and his wife and we declare according to the time of life. Return with your miracle. And for all of you who are out here by the anointing I declare. You return back with strange testimonies. And every power that will not let you go I speak by the spirit right now judgment comes upon them in the name of Jesus Christ for every one of you who has been here connecting may the spirit of faith rest upon you grace to believe God unusually and in the name of Jesus Christ I declare your faith in the Son of God your faith in the Word of God will translate to supernatural results in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give Jesus a big hand. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. 
check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 